Hey there guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about context action service in Roblox. In Roblox, you can use context action service for two main purposes. Number one, to assign an action to a user input. This allows you to bind specific actions to user inputs, such as key presses or mouse clicks. Number two is to display an input button on a mobile device. Because when you play your game on your laptop, you have the keyboard. But when you play on a mobile device, there is no keyboard. This feature is particularly useful for mobile users, enabling you to create on-screen buttons that can trigger actions. All right, so let's get started. Let's now go to your starter player, starter player scripts, and enter a local script. Remember, since we're dealing with local client user inputs, this can only be used in a local script. Go ahead and create that local script and inside your script, just enter the following lines. On the first line here, I'm declaring my context action service. On the second line, I'm declaring my yellow part inside my workspace. This is my yellow part right here. Here I have a function. It's changing the color of my yellow part to red. On the next line here, I'm declaring a constant. A constant is just another variable that I'm never going to change the value of this variable. And this variable is just a name, it's just a string, and the string is change color. Finally, on the last line here, I'm using the bind action API of my context action service to bind a key press with a function. This bind action API has four parameters. The first parameter it's a name, so it's just a name that we're giving it up here. You can name it anything you want. It does not matter. The second parameter is the name of our function. This is how we call our function. The third parameter, let's skip it for now. We're going to come back to that. And the fourth parameter is our key on our keyboard. So in this case, we're binding the C key on our keyboard with the action of this function. And the action is to change the color of our part. To red. Very simple. We're just binding a key on our keyboard to a function and the function is going to do whatever you want it to do. Let's now play and take a look. So there is my ball and now if I press the C key on my keyboard it changes the color of my ball to red. Now let's move on to the second reason why we use context action service is to show a button on our mobile device screen. To do that, we're going to go back here and we're going to change this parameter here. Instead of false, we're going to change it to true. And when you set this parameter to true, it's going to create a button on the mobile device screen. So let's now go to test this on a mobile device. Here I have something that looks like an iPhone. Let's now test this on our mobile device and see if we can find that button on the screen. You can see my button is right here. There's a low button here. So I have a jump button here for me to jump, but I also have a low button here for me to change the color of the ball. I'm going to click on that button and you can see the ball color changes. And that is how you put a button on your mobile device screen. If you don't like the look of that button, you can change the image of the button by entering the following lines. One thing to notice here is we're using the same name for all our context action service. Basically, we're using the set image API to set the image of our button. And you can get this address here by just going to your image. So let me now go to my home toolbox. I'm going to search for an image. And down here, I have an image of a fire. I'm now going to put this into my workspace. So I'll click on the image. Now we can close the toolbox. I'm going to go to my image that I have just placed inside my workspace. And I'm going to look for the texture property. Click on that because we need to copy this URL. So I'm going to right click and copy. And then I can go back over here and paste that address into here. All right, so that is how you get the address of an image. And now we're done with the image, so you can just go ahead and delete the image. Let's now play test and take a look. And now you can see the 
button image has changed. It is the image that I have selected from my toolbox. Now you can see here, this button is very close to my jump button. If you like, you can change the position of that button. To change the position of the button, just insert the following lines. So basically I'm gonna wait for three seconds. You can see the uh, different position of the button. So when we start out, it's gonna start up as we had before. And then after three seconds, the button is gonna move to a different position. To change the position of your button, use the set position API to change the position of your button. Let's play test and take a look. So now this is the original position. And after three seconds, you see I have moved my button to a different position on the screen. Now, customization of these buttons is limited. So if you don't like the look of these buttons, you can always create your own on-screen buttons using an image button or a text button instead. We're done with testing on the mobile device, so let's go back to the regular screen. And now that we have learned about context action service, let's revisit the code from our prior lesson on how to freeze a player. As you may remember, we had a lesson on how to freeze a player and we used context action service. Let's take a look. So here I am inside the game and in 10 seconds, I'm gonna be frozen. See, now I'm frozen. I cannot move, I cannot jump. And in 10 seconds again, I can move again. Now I can move again. And in another 10 seconds, I'm gonna be frozen again. Now I'm frozen. All right, and we did all this by using context action service. And as you may remember, I ran out of the room as soon as I showed you the code. So now that you have learned how to use context action service in Roblox, let's revisit the code and see if we can figure out what's going on. Here inside my starter player, I have the starter player script. Inside the starter player scripts, I have a local script too. This here was the code that was used in our how to freeze a player lesson. Basically here we have two different functions. One is to freeze the player and the other one is to unfreeze the player. So we're just waiting for 10 seconds. We freeze the player, wait another 10 seconds, we unfreeze the player, and we repeat the process. Wait for 10 seconds, freeze the player, wait another 10 seconds, and unfreeze the player. And this here is our name. The name is freeze movement. Let's take a look at the first function here, which is to freeze the player. So here we're using the bind action function. This is our name that we have declared up there. Next here we have the function. So this function here, it used enum context action result. And now if you go and look at this, I'm just gonna remove this, I put a dart here. You see this has two different options. The first option is to sync. And if you read over here, it says the input will stop at that function. So basically when you say sync, you're gonna absorb all the input there and it's gonna disappear. It's gonna act just like a black hole. It takes everything in and everything disappears. On the other hand, if you use pass, it's going to pass the input on onward to whatever happens after this function. So to take away all the controls from the player, we use dot sync. And that is going to take away all the input from the player. And what are the inputs? The inputs are right here, are specified in this enum statement here. So if I copy this enum statement and I place it into a print statement, like I have down here, but I'll show you again. So if you do print, paste it in, and now I'm gonna go and open up my output window. There it is. Now if I print this, you can see it is, the output is an array. It is an array that contains five different functions. So the first element of the array is the character forward, which is the W key. Number two is character backwards is the S key. And here we have the A key, here we have the D key, and then here we have the jump button which is the spacebar. Now the unpack function here, basically what it does is it's unpacking the array into a string. So if you just take that unpack function down to the command line here and print it, you're gonna see that it takes all those items from the array and it unpacked them into one single string. So here I have a very long string with the five different controls. I have the character forward here, I have the uh, character backward, character left, character right, and here is the character jump. So these five actions are gonna be sinking into a black hole. And that is the reason why the player can no longer control the character when we turn this on. 
On the other hand, if we want to give the control back to the player, we use the unbind action function here. So now nothing is binding and everything goes back to normal. Okay, let us play test again one more time and take a look. So here I can control my character and when we bind the action, we're going to lose all the control. Now I have lost all the controls and that's why my character is frozen. Now I can move again. For our last example, I'd like to show you an example provided to us by Roblox. So now let's go to our starter pack. I have a tool here and let me expand the tool. I have a local script inside the tool. In this example, we're binding the user input to an event inside the game. Roblox call it contextual action. In this case, we're binding the R key on our keyboard to an action. The action is to reload the weapon, which is printing reloading in this case. But in your game, you can put in the reload action where we're printing reloading here. And the event we're talking about here is this action, this reload action is only available when the tool is equipped. So when the tool is equipped, we bind the action of the R key to this function, to the reloading function. And when the tool is unequipped, we unbind the action. So now the R key to reload is no longer available. Let me now open up my output window and play test and take a look. So here I have my laser gun. If I equip the laser gun, now I can press the R key to reload. You can see I just reloaded one time, again, twice, again, three times. On the other hand, if I unequip my tool and try and press the R key, I can press it as many times as I like. It does not work because the R key only works when the tool is equipped. And now I press the R key, you can see it goes up. That is how you bind an action to an event in your game. Guys, now you understand what is context action service used for in Roblox. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in our next video. Take care everyone, peace.